Happy Friday, Andrew Webbs, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security nerd, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting June 15th, 2015. Now, due to travel and off-site meetings, I only had a, a couple of dailies this week, uh, but we'll go ahead and summarize them. Uh, let's start with the first one on Monday. Monday's story is a popular password vault hack. If you've been watching my daily or even weekly security videos, you probably know my password security advice. It's essentially use strong passwords, use different passwords everywhere, and use a password vault to help manage all those different passwords. Finally, if you can, take advantage of multi-factor authentication. And the reason I bring this up is a new story today has something to do with one of those pieces of advice. Specifically, LastPass, which is a popular Password Vault application announced that they had a security breach today. Essentially on their blog, they posted that they detected unauthorized hackers in their network. And these bad guys gained access to things like uh, their users' email addresses, uh, password reminders, server-based user salts, and even some password hashes. Now the good news is, according to this blog post, because of their strong salting techniques and the way they also have some client-side checks, they think it's very unlikely that that bad guys will be able to crack any of the hashes they stole. That said, they are doing things to help mitigate this issue. If you try to use LastPass from a new device, they're going to make you re-authenticate and log into their server uh, and things like that. They also plan to send emails to all the affected users. But anyways, if you're a LastPass user, the big takeaway here is they want you to change your master password. When you log into a password vault, you use one security password to unlock your entire vault. Now they don't think any of your actual vault data is stolen, but by changing your master password you can be sure that even if hackers somehow do decrypt the hashes, they won't be able to get into your particular vault. Now despite this hack, I still think password vaults are a very important security practice. In fact, I actually think LastPass is reacting to this breach pretty good. They seem to have a lot of security controls that really mitigate the stolen data. They're encrypting it and hashing and salting very well. That said, again, if you use LastPass, change your master password immediately. And Thursday's story is baseball cyber espionage. Before I jump in, sorry that I missed the video on Tuesday and Wednesday. I had an off-site meeting Tuesday, and I had to travel to Sacramento to give a security talk at UC Davis on Wednesday. Do note, if you subscribe to our blog or the YouTube channel, you'll get the videos right when I post them. Anyways, back to baseball hacking. According to a New York Times article, the FBI is investigating allegations that employees from the St. Louis Cardinals hacked the Houston Astros network to steal valuable data. Basically, there's a very important employee from the Cardinals that was known for creating a statistical database that helped them create a very good team. He eventually left the Cardinals and went to the Astros. But according to these allegations, employees at the Cardinals went through his master passwords from when he was with them and used one of those passwords to authenticate and log into the Astros network and steal a lot of important statistical player information. Now, this is an interesting story. We've heard tons about a nation-state cyber espionage, but this is one of the first stories I've seen recently talking about private organizations using cyber attacks to spy on one another, and I suspect we'll see more businesses doing this in the future. What can we learn about this? Well, this is all about authentication. This was not a big hack. Basically, because the particular ex-employee didn't change his passwords, his password was reused in this attack. So it's an important message that you need to use different passwords everywhere, whether it be different websites or different organizations you work for. Change your password. Another note, as you're thinking about authentication in your organization, as you lose employees, you need to make sure to revoke their credentials and their certificates so that they can't be used against you in the future if that uh, employee has any sort of vengeful motivations. Anyways, interesting story, especially if you're interested in baseball be sure to check the link in the blog post. Friday's story is two mobile platform vulnerabilities. Today I'll cover two vulnerabilities in mobile platforms and let's start with Zara which is a group of vulnerabilities that affects iOS and actually also uh, OS 10, Apple's normal operating system. Zara comes from researchers from a number of universities like Indiana and Peking and basically these guys found uh, four different vulnerabilities in the way that apps 
apps talk to each other and talk to the OS. And these vulnerabilities allow you to do a number of bad things. For instance, an app can actually start a new keychain and then it can trick other applications to use that keychain and then snoop on your keychain passwords. Uh, apps can also open sockets to each other and steal information from other programs on your computer. For instance, your password vault like 1Password and other vulnerabilities like this. So these are pretty important vulnerabilities that can gain a lot of access to your OS 10 and iOS keychains. Now they do seem to affect OS 10 a lot worse than they affect iOS and this is largely because the OS 10 app store is a little more permissive in what you can put on there. One important part of these vulnerabilities is in order for a bad guy to leverage them he needs to get a malicious application on your OS 10 or iOS device and this can be kind of hard. It's much more difficult to get a malicious application in iOS's App Store because of a number of checks they do, but it is a lot easier to get it on Apple's OS X App Store, and these researchers successfully got some of their apps on the App Store. So by the way, these researchers found these flaws six months ago and did share them with Apple, but Apple has yet to fix them, so the researchers decided they're important enough to go public with. They do share some mitigation techniques. Apparently, they've written an app that will scan your OS X computer for bad apps. There's manual ways you could look through your keychain and find applications that might have access to a keychain that it shouldn't have access to. But these are pretty big flaws. My number one tip is be very, very careful what you download. You're probably more safe with your iOS device, but when you're downloading things from the App Store, uh, be careful to make sure it's from a legitimate publisher out there. Now, there's a lot of very technical details about these flaws. If you're really interested in them, be sure to check the blog post, which will have a link to the research paper and a lot of good write-ups that will take you step by step through each of the vulnerabilities. On to the second mobile vulnerability which affects Android or specifically Samsung Android devices. Samsung devices ship with something called the Swift keyboard and this keyboard actually has an update mechanism that automatically allows it to get the latest language packs. The problem is there's a flaw in this mechanism that makes it easy for a bad guy to set up a fake proxy server and deliver malicious content through the update mechanism. Now this is actually a hard vulnerability to exploit. You have to somehow get yourself between the Android phone and the update uh, server it's trying to get to. So this type of attack would probably only happen on public wireless networks, perhaps cellular networks, but in that case the attacker would have to gain some sort of access to that network in some sort of man-in-the-middle attack. Anyways, these are interesting vulnerabilities. I'll be sure to post links to the Samsung one as well. And there's even a third set of mobile vulnerabilities affecting Android devices. Basically, a lot of Android apps don't implement HTTPS logins properly, and as a result, you can sniff a lot of clear text passwords. So again, the takeaways here for Apple OS X and iOS, be careful what type of apps you download. And for Android, uh, beware of man-in-the-middle attacks. Uh, Samsung has said they will patch this vulnerability soon, so if you're a Samsung owner, be sure to update your phone regularly. So that's all I have for you this week. I hope you learned something, and if you're affected, implement some of the tips or workarounds I mentioned. As always, if you want more regular stories or you want to get these videos as soon as they come out, be sure to subscribe to our blog. You can find it at blog.watchguard.com or watchguardsecuritycenter.com. And there's a reference section in my weekly post there that gives you links to all kinds of other interesting uh, security stories as well. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept, or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. Finally, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube video. Due to my travel and new role at WatchGuard, I'm finding it difficult to do daily videos every single day. But sometimes I'll do a video but won't get to blog about it till later. So if you follow the YouTube channel, you'll get the videos immediately. Anyways, thank you for watching. And as always, here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.